Hello, Septa Sora. I'm Septa. I'm Sor, and this is us. And today, we're back at it with The Rise of Bonton, Chapter 12, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Uh, apparently, this one is has some stuff about diet culture, so we're interested to see exactly what they have to say about that. I'm vibing with the chandeliers. Oh, is there? Oh, is there? Oh, is 어. 음. 분명히 지금이 이제 가장 높이 와 있는 거라고 한다면 분명히 이제 내려가는 순간이 있, 있을 거예요. 아름다운 순간의 끝은 항상 끝이죠. 끝 끝이 있는 거죠. 그렇기 때문에 저는 지금 저희가 뭐 많은 분들이 봐 주시게 그리고 저희가 스스로 느끼기에도 오르막을 생각한다고 하지만 그거 동시에 어, 또 팀의 리더기도 하기 때문에 늘이 어, 내리막의 순간은 어떨지 그때가 오면 어떻게 될지에 대해서 사실 걱정하고 생각을 하는 편인데 여러 가지들 중에 이제 몇몇 가지는 이제 제가 후회하는 부분들이 있었을 것 같아요. 항상 이 불확실한 뭔가 미래에 대해서 특히 두려움이 되게 큰것 같아요. 제 자신은 이렇게 많이 이루어놓은 것들이 있는데 어, 이것들이 한 순간에 정말 다 사라져 버린다고 생각을 한다면 정말로 무섭지 않을까요? I really like that. I like how they made them sit down and think about that, and you got to watch them all process it. And see who had thought about it and who hadn't. Yeah. So it seemed like the older boys mainly had already like thought about it. <laughs> and then like a few of the younger ones had not. Well, it's interesting because they're like, what all suddenly ends, but that's not, that's not how it's going to happen anyways. Mm -hmm. That's a very like dramatic way to view it, I feel like. Yeah, to think that there's like a the end or a closed book. Y yeah, unless... Unless they kind of decide to do it themselves, I guess, where they just completely end everything. And then but even then, like, but. yeah, they would have to disappear, right? Because, like, their legacy and everything is just going to it's gonna go for a very long time. Yeah, and everybody's still going to know who they are. Exactly. I don't think, I, I feel like they're going to have one of those careers that's just going to go forever. It's yeah. Gonna be like a Michael Jackson, like Beyonce, Taylor Swift. I feel like Taylor Swift's going to go for basically ever. The, the following that she's made, like, who was it? Stevie Nicks and Billy Joel mm -hmm. are in their, like, 60s or 70s now. And they just sold out, like, stadiums and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, I don't know. I guess maybe people, like, lose interest in their newer stuff, but one day, eventually. But um, I'm not sure. I'm not if sure it's gonna either. Be, like, people will, will I, I think, of course, they'll peak. And they're going to come down. I don't think they're going to continue going up forever. But I think they're going to have enough people around that they'll still they'll still have a presence. And they'll yeah. feel like they're accomplishing something. Yeah, I don't think that um, what they have built will ever just end. Mm. I think it may like it, it might change. Mm. I think it will change in structure. And I think we've actually seen it change yeah. already mm -hmm. now. With all of like their solo work and stuff going out. So I'm seeing it like shift and change, but it's still there. It's still present. Right. And I don't think that they would ever be able to just disappear mm -mm. or anything like that. Um, the kind of stardom that they have risen to is on a different level. Yeah. To be able to just 
be gone. I feel like V's, I'm pretty sure it was V saying it. He was talking about looking back, he'll have some regrets probably. Mm-hmm. I think that's basically where all of them will kind of land, where they'll see this like really amazing career, but they're going to see like little points here and there that they feel like they could have done better or done differently, mm-hmm. you know? But I don't think that they necessarily have to worry about like falling off the face of the earth in some way yeah i don't think that that's really anything they should ever be concerned about Yeah, they're past that point yeah i just hope that they've all gotten to the point at some point in their lives like the way that you view things where you don't regret things because no matter how they happened they helped you get to where you are now Mm -hmm. and so you're grateful for whatever things you might have viewed as mistakes even Mm -hmm. because they still got you to be the person you are and got you in the point in your life where you are. Right. Like if you, if they did everything and they never messed up or anything like that, like think of the egos they would have, they have to mess up here and there and feel like that performance sucked or this sucked or that sucked and stuff in order to like make sure that they stay grounded, you know, not everything's going to be perfect and like, that's okay. And like, yeah, it keeps you grounded and appreciative and the boys definitely are very grounded and appreciative. And I think it's because they can see where they need to grow and accept that. Yeah. They've had all these like little moments. Yeah. Help them stay humble. Yes. And then they always have a new goal that they're striving towards Mm -hmm. for themselves, which is also very healthy. That's so pretty. That's so pretty. It looks cool though. Yeah. 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 진짜 가수하려고 태어난 사람 같아. 2016년 9월 25일 제이오베로그 끝. 어두워져가 내 미래의 비 지기 어린 사랑의 이름 꿈을 꾸어 내 야망의 도끼 매어 칼을 갈았지 뭐 참을 수 없는 내 욕심에 칼을 무뎌져 알고 있었다. 사랑은 낙마의 또 다른 이름 손을 잡지 마 외쳤지만 쳐버렸지 내 양심을 날이 갈수록 느끼는 날 가로는 실도 현실에 찍혀본 때 묻은 비도 생각 못했지 그 욕심이 지옥을 부르는 나 팔이 젖히는 숨이 차오르고 뒤틀린 현실에 눈 감는 매어 밤 울리는 비극에 오르고 but 잊어요 먹게 그걸 잊는 게 당초에 보기가 안 돼요 Oh my goodness. That's cool. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> all right, all right. I'll give a round of applause to J Hope for that performance. There. Okay. He said he hoped that people would clap and give him a round of applause for that performance. So that was really cool. You forgot the last part. Ah, uh, yes. As expected of our Hobie. There it is. <laughs> um, but honestly, that was really cool. Yeah. I liked that track a lot. I liked it a lot. It gave me goosies, especially with like the beautiful artistic representation that was happening on the screen. That mm -hmm. was really cool. Hey, V Live 시청자 여러분, 안녕하십니까? 10월 9일 카운트다운 방탄 뉴스 앵커 진입니다. 오늘의 소식입니다. 방탄 소년단이 정규 2집 앨범을 낸다고 합니다. 현장에는 슈가님을 모셨습니까? <웃음> 네, 현장에는 <웃음> 현장에 나와 있는 모셨습니다. 네, 네, 슈가입니다. 네, 네, 지금 방탄 소년단 이 정규 2집이 막 발매됐다고 하는데요. 아이고! 네. 혹시 방탄 소년단의 정규 2집 앨범을 들어보셨나요? <웃음> 네, 네, 네. <웃음> 현장상이 네 굉장히 좋은데요. <웃음> 아, 네, 네. 그래서 어떻다고요? 네, 네. 네 앨범이 대박이 날것 같습니다. 네. 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 저희의 일집 다크 앤 와일드였죠. 네. 그 정말 제목처럼 굉장히 어둡고 또 불안한 그런 청춘 아니었습니까? 네네. 네. 하지만 이번 앨범. 윙스입니다, 여러분. 윙스. 날개를 날아오르고 방탄소년단이 날아오를 준비가 됐다는 바로 그런 뜻인데요. 윙스? 소년, 소년. 유혹을 만나다. 야. 아, 빠밤 해주시기로 했잖아요. 뭔가 유혹하면 되게 우리 근처에 있어요. 그렇죠. 어떤 유혹이 있을까요? 뭐 예를 들어. 먹고 싶은 거. 뭐, 뭐 그렇죠. 뭐, 그렇죠. 뭐, 뭐, 먹고 싶은 게 있겠죠. 네. 그리고 우리 정국이. 정국이. 정국이 내일 뭐 스케줄 해야 되는데요. 자야 되는데, 어, 자야 되는데 뭐 어, 게임 하고 싶고 그런 유혹이 있잖아요. 집 예? 침대 밑으로 바로 컴퓨터가 보여요. <웃음> <웃음> 그런 소년의 뭔가 갈등과 어, 고민을 뭔가 이렇게 느끼면서 데미안이 가장 많은 부분에서 이제 저희가 하고자 하는 얘기와 많은 흡사한 부분 접점이 있다고 느꼈어요. 그래서 이제 자켓 앨이나 뮤직비디오 컨셉에 데미안에서 나오는 많은 오브제들이나 그런 요소들을 많이 차용을 했습니다. 자, 정규 이지 윙스 파이팅! 멤버들과 저는 트렌드에 뒤처지지 않는 그리고 나아가서 트렌드를 이끌 수 있는 음악을 시도해 왔습니다. 방탄소년단의 세계관은 성장이라는 가치에 큰 무게를 두고 있습니다. 아티스트로서의 성장이며 동시에 사회 구성원으로서의 성장입니다. 本日最後の主人公は防弾少年団. 아 진짜요? 아니에요. 감사합니다. 옷이 고급스럽습니다. 저희 멤버들 왔네요. 지금은 할 수조차 없어. 정도만 갈 수조차 없어. 내가 너무 달콤해. 너무 달콤해. 너무 달콤해. 요새 마청이 너무 성격이 이상해졌습니다. 근데 컨셉이 이런 컨셉이 아닌데. 회사에서 막았어요. 너는 잘생기고 그랬으니까. 차가운 이미지로 조금 한번 가보자구나 자연스럽게 원래 성격들이 조금씩 나오고 있지 않나 Yeah, he is the cold image all the time <웃음> 네, 다음 질문이요 섹시 섹시 네, 다음 질문이요 여기가 바로 자랑스러운 방탄소년단 아미 여러분 저희 이제 녹화가겠습니다 음악 스탠바이 3, 2, 서정가의 해만의 셀 소설 데미안의 판매 부수가 갑자기 부쩍 늘었다고 합니다. 이게 아이돌 그룹 방탄소년단의 영향이라는데요. 
scene and I love that. I'm not the most familiar. SNS 상에서 인기를 반영하는 소셜 50과 월드 앨범, 월드 디지털 송등 세부 차트에서도 1위를 차지했습니다. 뮤지션이 거둔 최고의 성적입니다. <웃음> 부담이라기보다는 책임감이 조금 더 커지는 게 맞는 것 같아요. 항상 이럴 때일수록 저희가 하고 있는 것들 그런 것들을 더잘 계속해서 보여드려야겠다. 결국엔 춤추는 별을 잉태하는 과정이고 과정에서 너무 자연스러운 거니까 방황해도 괜찮다. 지금 좀 유혹을 만날 수 있다. 그랬던 저희가 이제 이 시대에 지금 같은 동시대의 청, 젊은 친구들에게 꼭 하고 싶은 말이거든요. 새 앨범 윙스로 미국 빌보드 앨범 차트에 2주 연속 이름을 올린 그룹 방탄소년단입니다. 첫주 26위는 앨범 차트에서 한국 가수가 거둔 최고의 성적. 전 세계 아이튠즈 97개 차트 1위 등 놀라운 기록을 세우며 K-POP 새 대세로 우뚝선 기계를 물었습니다. 음악을 믿고 들을 수 있는 팀, 믿고 볼수 있는 팀, 그런 어떤 믿고 보는, 믿고 듣는 방탄소년단 그게 제일 제가 갖고 싶습니다. If those are the rules we go by. <laughs> <laughs> <웃음> 아, 네. <웃음> 네, 제가 음, 거의 대진데 이거. <웃음> well, <that's rude. 웃음> 절망을 한다. 피땀 눈물 그 앨범 나올 때또 굉장히 고생 많이 했다고. 그때 제가 무슨 바람이 불어가지고 거울을 딱 보더니 잘생겨 보이고 싶은 거예요. 어. 아, 나도 좀 이제 외모가 괜찮은 멤버들 순위로 올라가고 싶다. 어. 그런 생각이었죠. 그래서 아, 나도 살좀 빼야겠다 해서 빼다 보니까. 욕심이 너무 생겨가지고 10일간 한 끼만 제대로 먹어. 10일간. 네. 대한민국 사람들이 좀더 미에 대해서 좀좀더 높은 기준을 가지고 있으신 것 같더라고요. 다른 서양 나라에 비해서 외모 얘기를 좀 많이 하다 보니까 여자든 남자든 기본적으로 한국 사람들이 많이 남들의 시선을 많이 신경 쓰는 것 같아요. 미션들 <웃음> 보고 있어. 애들 숨모신다 숨모셔. 오늘 하루 먹은 거 어때? 비인간적인. Stop staring at me. 다이어트를 하잖아요. 그분들은 밥도 제대로 안 먹고 하루에 예전에 사실 너무 안 먹으면서 다이어트를 심하게 해서 음음. 조금 힘들었어요 사실 음음. 막 쓰러질 것 같고 음. 그래서 옛날에 닌기 맞고 사실 음. 남자 사랑할 때라는 곡을 할 때는 닌기 꽂으면서 약간 어. 맨날 응급실 가서 닌기 꽂고 <웃음> 맨날 어. 밤에 그다음 다음 날 아침에 스케줄 뛰고 이랬었어요. 어. 
these ways of doing like diets and stuff should not be idol worthy at all but then as soon as like one idol comes up that doesn't exactly fit that agenda it's like shit hits the fan <laughs> ちんしが굉장히저극단적으로심하게했었다고그때는닭가슴살이이렇게팩으로있으면닭가슴살이두덩이이렇게들어있어요그거를하루에두팩을먹으면서1년가까이를버텼었어요하루에두번먹으면1
unhealthy weight. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of ways you can turn into muscle. You can look at what some like the bodybuilders eat. Mm-hmm. It's insane. They eat so, so much food and it's because they know how to transform it into something that they want. You think that a uh, big hit and stuff would be able to find like some kind of nutritionist to be like, yeah, we know you need the food for the energy um, and then have trainers for them or something that helps them transform that energy into more healthy things. If if they're yeah. so concerned about it, I don't I don't really think I don't feel like they need to do that. But if they're so concerned, not big hit, but some of them are putting people on IVs. There's got to be other ways to do it than like that. That's just a little yeah. overboard, if you ask me. I would agree. I think that there are way healthier ways to approach that. Especially since dietitians exist. Exactly. Like if you want to keep track of things that much, there are people whose job it is to make sure that you're still getting what your body needs and getting the results that you want when they take into account like the types of exercise and things that you're doing and how many calories you're burning and all of that stuff. I don't like when people look into those things that hard and try and make it such a fine science to regulate somebody's body like that. I don't think that's healthy. I don't like that. But if these big companies are that worried about it and they consider these idols their products, then they should also remember that they're people and keep them happy and healthy. Because if you don't, you're not going to get anything good out of them anyway. Either, you know, do it the right way or leave them alone, basically. Um, And part of it is also like a societal thing, because, of course, there's like the articles of like sugar gaining weight and all that stuff. So I know that they in their minds are also seeing this feedback from the public and then themselves are choosing to go on these diets. And yeah, because of right so like that's like a more of like a broad scale where people just need to chill out and let people you know be healthy and look how they want to look and such yeah that's a bigger issue to tackle and way harder one but i know at least in america in like the past five-ish years or something there's been a lot of big like moves in that area Mm -hmm. where people aren't as obsessed with it yeah there's not so much body shaming in that arena yeah I've but noticed like, an interesting influx going both ways now. Mm. Now there's people on both sides of the camp. But for the most part, people are just like, hey, if you're happy and healthy and living your life, then good for you. Yeah. And one one of the biggest that, like issues I feel like we have here are the celebrities, like the Kardashians, who have a bunch of surgeries and whatever to look a certain way. But then they endorse this diet or whatever that they're not even doing they're just getting paid to endorse it Mm -hmm. and then they're like oh they're doing this diet let me pay a shit ton of money to do that diet now to look exactly like them but really they're doing completely different things and that's what i see as like one of the biggest issues yeah it's really not fair when somebody has all this extra help behind the scenes with like body sculpting and like moving all the fat cells in your body to where you want it Mm -hmm. without surgery yeah there are ways to do that um it's like cool sculpting and stuff like that but only these celebrities can afford that kind of thing and then they're trying to act like they used this one product and that's how it happened Mm -hmm. it's not the way that works yeah (laughs) that's false advertising yeah i wish there was an easier way to shift everybody's mindset about it but i think it's going to be one of those things where there's always different groups of people there's going to be the people that want everyone skinny and then there's gonna be the people that are in the mid camp which is hopefully the much larger group that's okay with people being however they are and then i know that there's even like that weird the weirder side where they want everyone to be thicker Mm -hmm. because they find that more attractive or they view it as healthier, even if it's not for your body type. Because exactly. I was like, sometimes it is healthier for certain body types, but yeah. a lot of the times there's a lot of really bad things that can happen to people's like hearts and yeah, stuff when they start bad. to boost size too much, too fast and stuff. Like I literally still constantly get told I need to eat more and gain weight constantly. It's a constant thing in my work. If there's any like a barbecue or grill, like they're doing some kind of food there or whatever, they're like, make sure you get extra because you need to gain weight. It's literally a constant thing. So like 
there's the opposite end where they feel like if you're like heftier, bigger, you're healthier. But like my body does not need that. If I if I'm gaining that much weight from from eating, like I gain a hundred pounds from eating, it's all very bad for me. Yeah. Period. It's just ridiculous. People should just leave each other alone and let them be how they are. Yes. And let's celebrate different body types because everybody's meant to be different shapes and sizes. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. Nice. 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 Oh my goodness, that's Hosoga, 항상 느끼지만 또 느끼는 것 같다. 우린 같이 이렇게 하는 거구나. 아미다우고마요아미고마워아미고마워아스미또이제 아무도 느껴볼 수 없는 그런 일을 우리가 하고 있구나. 막 이런 걸 느꼈던 것 같다. 아, 고생했네. 이런 말은 별로. 앞으로 더 이쁘게 만들자. 이런 말이 더 맞는 것 같아. 거의 대성 받았습니다. 이상 자체가 저희를 완전 뿌듯하게 해주는 상이라고 저는 생각을 하는데요. 솔직히 이제 목표가 뭔지 모르겠어요. 지금 지금 이제 딱 이제 제가 이루고 나서는 아니 뭐 우리가 여기가 끝이 아니지 않습니까? 그쵸. 우리가 하고 싶은 목표는 더 네. 많고 하고 싶은 일은 더 많은데 뭐 아, 되게 아 여러분이 되게 고생했지 않습니까? 그래서 そうです。さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、さあ、
그게 또 이제 또 그게 지나면 또 목표를 달성하는 거니까 그 목표가 또 이제 이루어지면 또 다른 목표를 제가 찾 제가 또 만들게요. 음. 우리 아미 여러분은 항상 음, 저희 일곱 명 곁에서 많이 보살펴 주세요. 저희도 정말 열심히 할게요. 와 리허설 봤는데 힘들더라고요. 별로 인정하고 싶지 않죠. 조금 멋있는데요. 아 정말요? 네 이제 위에 달렸다가 무대 밑으로 이제 빨리 이제 들어가면 막 그때부터 빨리 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 사랑아 이제 시장에서 자신들만의 영역을 확실하게 구축하면서 전 세계가 주목하는 정상급 아이돌 그룹으로 우뚝섰습니다. <웃음> 
have its result. Ami. Let's fly with our beautiful wings in 2017 as well. BTS love armies as always. Thank you very much. 진짜 우리도 고생을 많이 했고 아미도 고생을 많이 한걸잘 알고 있기 때문에 감사합니다. 저희 음악과 무대가 많은 분들께 꿈이 되고 희망이 됐으면 좋겠습니다. I hope that our stage and our performance and the music could be the hopes and dreams for many people of the world. Thank you very much. 진짜 열심히 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 진영이 말했듯이 정말 뜨거운 걸 느낄 수 있었다. Adorable. Hello. <laughs> 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 Oh my goodness. <laughs> 시작이라고 생각합니다. 빛나는 건 영원하지 않아. 햇빛이 눈부셔 눈을 찡그려도 시간이 지나면 익숙해져. 하늘 높이 올라간데도 부르기만 하던 것들도 순간은 영원하지 않아. 하지만 네가 빛나는 순간 세상은 멈춘 듯 느려지고 그 빛은 사라지지 않아. That was cool. That was really cool. But also concerning. Some of the things I just saw. 어 지금 비장한데 뭐 나올 것 같은데 지금. 아 그렇죠. 그렇죠. 이 정도. Just facial expression. I know. 이것은 무엇입니까? Thank you. So that one was an experience. Um, there was a lot of different aspects of their lives that we just looked at because it showed we've seen like all their hard work that went in so that they could rise to the level that they were here. And once they hit all that popularity, like all the success is happening and in their own heads, there's all of the doubt and self-reflection where they decide to punish themselves because they aren't working hard enough or skinny enough. And they start to put themselves on diets and things. And luckily, not as extreme as other companies that forced their members to survive off of like IVs and nothing. But there's all of that. And then they get that big payoff 
of all of these awards and they realize that army is right there with them working hard with them and that they love them and they're experiencing all of this with them and yeah. it like i feel like i would hope that that lessens a lot of that self-critical tendency you know well for a little while yeah seems like a from what like seems like a by pattern. this point yeah it's just like that's just the pattern of what's happening uh, doubt uh, release album does well doubt release album does, does well, well. <laughs> doubt i mean like it, that's pretty much exactly what keeps going on so they'll probably be like hell yeah and then be like i don't know doubt themselves about something again and yeah then- well because every time that they do absolutely amazing and win all these awards it's fantastic but it has also raised the bar so for the next Scared time of peaking. Yeah. So it seems like that's mainly what it is because they want to at least hit that level of success or do even better next time. And so it's just like that constant building pressure to do better and better. Exactly. I guess as the pressures rise, I just get concerned about the boys. I know they've already gone through but this. they're fine. I know. They vibing. I know. And I know that they've already gone through it and that they're doing well, but like seeing it and like, I don't know, I guess also understanding it personally, the way that you attack yourself in different times of your life, especially like at this age and what is all going on in their lives. I feel like for them, it's even worse because there's so much more stress and people looking in from the outside and those voices can get really loud. I barely had any of that and I know how much that sucked. (laughs) So seeing it on a grander scale for them, it makes me feel for them. It makes me sad. And I think, um, I I think a lot of army does feel that way and they can understand what the boys were going through. And that's one of the things that builds the community so much more is that sense of understanding. So I don't, I don't know if I can really talk about like societal pressures towards men because I've never really focused on them very well. <sighs> like in junior high and stuff, like I had really long hair and I got picked on for that for sure. And that sucked. I've always been a smaller man as well, like 5'10" which some people now might be tall, but actually being tall is like considered six foot or taller. So I've been made fun and for of like the way I've had my hair before, my height, my weight. I get made fun of, literally, I still get made fun of uh, for that. Um, but I've never, I can't, I don't think I've had it on like a scale that I can really relate to when it comes to the boys, like in any, any way. Obviously they've had it on an insane scale, but I also don't know if I have like a similar personality because as much as I have been picked on it, that doesn't really affect me that much about how I feel towards myself. I'm very comfortably myself. I don't really mind. Um, it, it makes me feel, it makes me view society differently. Not me. It makes me view other people differently. Mm-hmm. It makes me trust less makes me feel that a lot of people have bad intentions. It gives me a more negative view towards like just life and and the world in general, which is why I feel like I like read people fairly well because I I don't trust their intentions. So I've always like really analyzed because I need to figure out what they want before I start giving in in like a friendship way or literally any yeah. way. Can attest that uh, time and time again, he has read people's intentions very well Mm. in Um, many different instances (laughs) so i don't know i've never i've never punished myself for the way people view me so i don't really understand it um i just if someone doesn't really like me or or view me in a positive light that's okay because there's people i don't view in a positive light and people that i don't like and I just feel like that's kind of a normal thing, but they experience just harassment and bullying for just existing on a scale that I don't know if you could really ignore it. Um, well, and so I think I, I think that um, from what you're saying, it also sounds like there's like the cultural difference in expectations. Like you had pretty long hair, right? And so 
you were made fun of for being too feminine. Right. Yeah. For a guy. Yeah. Long hair and then like small stature, which yes. I couldn't help. I mean, it's just. I mean, yeah. Literally how I am. You're as tall as you're going to be. Yeah. And as small as I'm going to be. As big. Like I've, I was always the skinny one, you know? Yeah. So. But I do see the cultural difference there too, because like, it seems like in Korea, at least for now, they really enjoy that like slender the petite small frame yes yeah they really enjoy like the slender kind of aesthetic exactly yeah but then here for guys that are slender they're made fun of and told to bulk up and right. eat more right exactly because mm-hmm. you're too skinny mm-hmm. and it's just it's an interesting comparison i guess that it's on such different spectrums yeah um it's making me think of an interesting tiktok trend that i saw where people were talking about how in their home country everybody called them ugly because they didn't fit the beauty standard for whatever country it was and then through like social media and TikTok, they found that in a different country, they were the epitome of beauty and everyone there just loves them. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where there is nothing wrong with you. You're just not in the right place to be appreciated for who you are. So I love the fact that ARMY is spreading far and wide and everybody's cool with people being exactly who they are and how they are. Because I think that that mindset needs to be spread far and wide. (laughs) And through many different like cultures and countries as well, because it is a problem everywhere that you go. And the more that we can accept each other and remind you, hey, you're beautiful the way you are. Stop picking on yourself for whatever it is that you think is wrong with you. I think part of it is like people need to mind their own business, right? Because BTS are, are so huge and has so many eyes on them that if, if one of the members gains weight, it will be noticed, right? But I think some just people, let's just, I don't know. There's some people are a little bit too attached to the members, and they make it their concern about maybe why. Because if you knew me my entire life and then suddenly I gained enough weight that you can see it on me, you might be a little concerned. You might think something's going on. Uh, just experience that with someone I knew, except the opposite way. They lost weight. And immediately I was like, is everything good? What's going on? Because it was just so, I've never seen that before, you know? With that person. Right. So I think that's part of it, too, is like they're not only just being judged by people who don't like them, people that are just going to talk shit because they want to hurt their feelings. But they're also on like the other end where people are hyper analyzing because they love them so much that they're concerned and about then, a change. Exactly. So a small change, they could they could bring it up in a con- concerned way, but then that's going to blow up. And then they'll also see that too, where it's like, oh my God, people are noticing that like I've gained weight. Should I lose weight? Am I not supposed to gain weight? You know, yeah, even if it comes from a good place, right? It still has, it can have a negative effect on them as individuals, right? That's true. Yeah, I can definitely see that. But don't go anywhere, guys, because don't forget we have deleted scenes. Hopefully, it's not as heavy as the main video was. Woo! Yeah, I'm hoping this is a lot more of the lighthearted, them having fun with each other. Because mm-hmm. I think everybody could use pick me up after talking about like diet culture and stuff like that. Because I know that's heavy and it affects a lot of people in really significant ways. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
방탄소년단의 팬이 아니어도 퍼포먼스는 인정한다. 이런 뜻이라고 합니다. 감사합니다. 같은 경우에는 우선 좋은 트랙이 하나 나왔습니다. 그 트랙에서 근데 도저히 그 어떤 멜로디나 워딩이 나오지가 않더라고요. 그래서 되게 저도 막 고민을 많이 하고 정말 어 멜로디만 막 스무 번씩 써보고 막 랩도 스무 번씩 써보고 그랬었는데 처음에 근데 제가 가져간 가사 중에 부드럽게 죽여줘라는 가사를 써서 한번 가져갔었어요 B 파트에다가 근데 이제 그거를 방필이님 마음에 들어 하셔서 Kill Me Softly라는 어떻게 보면 유명한 관용군데 그래서 그 거기에서 조금 시작이 되어가지고. 그래서 또 이게 또 재밌는 게 원래 지금 호비가 하고 있는 킬링 파트죠 이 파트 킬링 파트 원은 만는 만이야 제가 할뻔 하긴 했는데 어쨌든 뭐 제가 했으면 클일날 뻔했어요 근데 뭐 호비가 너무 잘해서 지금 인트 센터에서 춤도 추고 제가 그 춤을 출 수는 없지 않습니까 센터에서 아무튼 <웃음> 그리고 피땀 눈물 워딩이 나왔을 때 가장 반대했던 사람 바로 슈가 형입니다 슈가 형이 뭐라 그랬냐면 <웃음> 약간 좀 더럽지 않나요? <웃음> 피땀 <웃음> 눈물 약간 좀 더럽지 않나요? 좀 피땀 눈물 이렇게 하면 약간 좀, 좀 더러운 것 같다고 잘안될것 같다고 <웃음> 슈가 형이 그렇게 반대를 했는데 근데 최근에 슈가 형이 반대하면 다잘 됩니다 <웃음> 이 부분이 방탄소년단 데뷔 초에 강남구청역 한 음식점에서 옆 테이블에서 밥 먹는 걸 봤어요 허겁지겁 먹길래 안쓰러워서 아는 척안 했어요 팬이었어요 어 맞아요 그때 네, 이거 제발 이런 거 맞아 네. 그때 거기 거기 연습실이 있었어가지고 음. 뭐 이렇게 식당을 대놓고 먹고 그러죠? 아니 그런 거 아니었던 것 같아요 그때 막 밥을 잘못 먹고 저희가 도시락 챙겨 다니다가 음. 시간 없어갖고 네 그때 먹었던 것 같은데 <웃음> 맞아요 되게 그때 식대도 그런, 있었고 막. 그런 옛날 시절 생각하면 지금 생각해보면 좀 어이도 없기도 하고 어때요? 진짜 이런 어때요? 그렇죠 막 아니 그 시절이 있었기 때문에 네. 되게 약간 되게 뭐랄까 좀 고맙 그렇죠. 그 시절이 되게 어. 그립고 그런 것 같아요. 어떻게 보면 그 시절이 더 그립기도 하고요. 네, 그때 식대가 네. 6천 원이었거든요. 네. 안 그래요? 식대 생각하면. 네, 안 돼, 안 돼, 안 돼. <웃음> <웃음> 안 되지. It's not a very big budget. <웃음> 이런 거 해줘야지, 정보가. 아, 프로다 치고 돼. 이런 거 해줘야지, 그래. 바로 바로 나와줘. 소리 내. 소리 내야지, 정보가. 소리 필수다. 어. 그렇지. 아, 안녕하세요. 저는 방탄소년단 황금 막내 전득국입니다. 네. What's happening? 이렇게 나온 타이밍이 제일 마음에 드는 거예요. 안무도 멋있으니까 좋아할 것 같아요. 많은 분들이 이제 기다렸던 그런 그런 컨셉, 그런 안무가 아닐까. I cannot wait to see the music video. It looks so yeah, pretty. It's really cool. Yep. Yeah, it's really disgusting. I wanted to like absinthe so much. I don't know about like anywhere else, but they made it sound so cool here, and then it sucked. Yeah, it's just like black licorice. Oh god, if, which I'm oh, not a fan so, of. Like, it's, so it just killed it. Uh, uh, some no? people love black licorice. And yeah, more power to you. So love it or hate god, it kind I of thing. Hate it so much. And I am so not gross. a fan. Blech. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm good. I know, it made me so sad. I wanted to like absinthe. They're like, you're gonna like see things and get the green fairy. Yeah, like, like, let's go. And then it was just disgusting. Yeah. I hated it. It was gross. Yeah. And then, I mean, it didn't, it wasn't any different than any other alcohol that right. I've had, other than the fact that it tasted terrible. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. How, how do you do that without flinching? I'm being positive. It looked really cool though. It did look really cool. It's worth it. It was worth it.
It looks so cool! When your hair gets stuck in the car door. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. Ooh, you know that that smoke bomb smelled so bad. I like to smell smoke bombs. You do? Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any like disgusting smells that you like? Like they're supposed to be disgusting, but you enjoy them. Like for example, one of mine is gasoline, mm -hmm. right? I love the smell of gasoline. It reminds me of my childhood. Me too. Like, Cause I just think of going to the gas station mm. and then I would always get like a little thing, like a little thing of gum or like a payday, like a candy yeah. bar. Yeah. Or soda or something. We used to always go to like a lake near here. So whenever I think of gasoline, I think of the boats. Because oh. uh, you can smell the, f the fuel and stuff. So I always make you think of like swimming in the lake and hanging out with the family and like grilling and stuff like that. So it's supposed to smell bad to but it's a lot of people. But it's associated with good memories. Yeah, it's like associated with good memories. So it smells good to me. Mm. Just curious because she mentioned the smoke bomb thing. And I like the smell of like fireworks and smoke bombs and stuff like that. I don't know if it's because it's kind of in the same vein or not, but yeah, happy memory kind of thing. Yeah, but I personally like that. If you guys have anything like that, let us know because that'd be really interesting. Yeah, to know about. I want to know. Yeah. I wonder if it's mainly like a memory association thing for most people, or if it's just like a no. Nah, I just love this smell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so close. Yeah, yeah, that's right.
음악이 어떤 분한테는 그냥 단순한 이제 정말 즐거움이나 그런 게 될, 되기만 해도 좋고 또 어떤 분의 어떤 인생이나 그런 가치관에 좋은 영향을 미칠 수가 있다면 그걸로 이미 저희는 저희 음악적인 목표는 되게 달성되지 않았나 이렇게 그런 생각을 합니다. 잠시 저 사이즈 다 빠졌네요. 저요? 네. 저, 저 사이즈 좀덜 빠진 것 같아요. 그래서 그냥. 살 같은 거안 빼고 자연스럽게 빠지기 전까지는 그냥 막살 엄청 빼고 이렇게 안 하기로 했어요. 그래서 지금 그냥 잘 먹고 있습니다. 어제도 제가 네? 맛있는 비빔밥, 피자 음 음 맛있게 먹고 자서 눈이 지금 부었습니다. <웃음> 그럼 이제 복근 없어진 거 아니에요? 네, 없어요. <웃음> 앞으로 찌찌미는 못 보겠네요. 아, 절대 못 보죠. 절대 이제 저에게 노출은 없을 것 같습니다. 여러분 기대해 주지 마세요. We saw your recent video. 음. 뭐 스케줄들이 되게 많을 텐데 요즘에 바쁠 텐데 네. 어, 11월 12, 13일 고척돔에서 팬 미팅 있어요. 네 예. 맞습니다. 봄에서 네. 야 스케줄이 예. 다르네. 오. 근데 15, 10, 예매 15분 만에 3만 8천 석이 매진. 예. 와. 예. 야. 야 어떻게 야. 생각하십니까 이런 현상에 대해서? 본인들이 이렇게 인기가 있다는 건뭐 다 알고 있겠지만 그래도 신기하죠 굉장히 신기해요? 네 어. 그렇지, 이런 데서 뭔가 네. 진짜 항상 뭐 인터뷰할 때 나오고 인기, 인기를 실감하시나요 이렇게 질문이 네. 오는데 네. 진짜 이런 데서 많이 좀 실감을 하는 것 같아요 음. 뭐, 뭐 15분 만에 뭐 3만 그러니까. 8천 석이 매진이 진짜 되고 진짜 다 올리고 네. 건가 뭐 이런 생각 네네 네. 약간 네. 그렇죠. 어, 시, 진짜 그런 건가 네. 싶기도 하고 네. 그 예전이나 지금이나 제가 제일 구황하는 말이 있어요 니체 춤추는 별을 인퇴하려면 혼돈을 내면의 혼돈을 지내야 한다. 저제 항상 제 심리나 이런 저런 것들 항상 공부를 도와주시고 저에게 많이 상담해 주시는 선생님이 계세요. 제 이상한 건가요? 제가 쓸데없는 생각을 너무 많이 하는 건가요? 남들은 저 보고 너무 생각이 많고 너무 쓸데없이 고민한다. 그럼 중이병 환자다 뭐 이렇게 하는 사람도 있다라고 하는데 선생님이 해주신 말씀은 그게 다 지금 내 어떤 젊은 날의 가지, 젊은 날의 나무의 그런 것들이라고 생각해서 한것 하면 많이 힘들고 많은 가지치기 깎고 자르고 아프겠지만 그런 시간들이 지나면 멋진 멋진 나무가 될 거라고 생각하고 나무도 정말 오래 산막 200년, 300년짜리 나무는 진짜 뿌리가 세고 하듯이 그래서 저도 그렇게 되고 싶다는 생각을 했던 것 같습니다. 네, 나무 얘기를 너무 오래 했네요. <웃음> 근데 나무를 좋아해요. 그래서 <웃음> 나무를 좋아해서. Trees are nice. I like them. <웃음> 제가 옛날에 학교 축제 때 굉장히 많이 했던 곡이에요. 이걸로 또 휘날렸었는데 또. 어, oh wow. 그때는 제이홉이 아닌 정호서. <웃음> 안녕하세요, 레이니즘의 센터. 처음과 끝. 모두 다 센터에 있고 안녕하세요 방탄소년단 청원입니다 나이스 Me when I'm like 80 That wasn't a joke I'm serious I can actually like imagine like old you just like messing around with like a walking stick or cane They'd be like grandpa how'd you hurt yourself? <laughs> Like I was dancing, young man, something you would never understand. Honestly, though. Are you ready? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank 
우리 아미 분들이랑 그리고 우리 화면 이쁘게 나오게 해준 우리 스태프분들 그쪽에서 우리 도와준 매니저 형들 뭐 피디님들 전부 다 정말 감사드린다는 말씀 해드리고 싶고 또 정말 고생 많으셨습니다 진짜 Well, I'm glad we got to see some of their goofiness. Yeah, lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah. And um, I really liked the behind the scenes for the music video. I thought that was cool. Yeah, that was really cool, though. Behind the scenes for like any of their music videos is pretty dope because they have such a huge production. I know. And it's it's always really cool to see like the finished product and then everything that went into making that happen. I want to know who that. does all like the uh, stage production and stuff. Yeah. Like builds the sets. And I know for some places they go places for it. But I also know that uh, in other ones they have them built for them and stuff. Mm -hmm. I would love to know who does that and uh, comes up with the ideas for it and stuff. It'd be cool. Yeah. I agree. There's a lot of hard work that goes in behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. So even in the behind the scenes, we don't get to see all of that. <laughs> yeah. We just see the behind the scenes for the boys, but not for like the entire like crew that puts it all together. And then like during live performances, the stage production crew. Yeah, we oh need my a, gosh, they make it go like we need behind the scenes of the behind the scenes. Yeah, I bet it's chaos. I bet it's insane. I bet it's chaos and insane initially, but at least by performance date, it seems like they have it to a science. No, no. I mean, more like an organized chaos. Yeah. Where like, if you don't know what's going on, then, then it'll just look crazy. Yes. But it's probably like a very well oiled machine, machine if you have any understanding of yes. what is happening. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah. So I'd be really interested if that exists out there. I want to watch it. Me too. I love to see like all the work that goes into like designing the lights for a show and all of that stuff. Cause it's all very intricate. There's so many different things going on. Mm -hmm. And I like to see that, that thought process. If you made this far, please start liking and subscribing and that bell. We have a Rise of playlist. If you want to check that out, we also do reactions to live BTS stuff over our Patreon for our top tier patrons. If you want to check that out until next time, please remember that we love you. Stay safe and healthy. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.